Thank you. That's perfect. Hello, we are here with Tanaz Esogian. Did I say that almost right? Esagian, close enough. Esagian. Yeah. All right. Whose movie, Love Crimes of Kabul, is going to be seen in the Human Rights Watch at the New York Film uh, Lincoln Center Human Rights Watch Festival and also on HBO summer documentary series July 11th. Yeah. And it's an incredible look at the woman's prison in Afghanistan uh, where I wondered, first of all, uh, where these women are imprisoned for moral offenses. But, for instance, they had sex before they were married. Or this one woman ran away from her home and sought shelter with another woman, and both she and the other woman are arrested. Or things like uh, murdering their husband or carrying bombs. But half the women are there yes. for moral crimes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as they are... Or even, like, not having necessarily even had sex, but... Having lunch or having, dinner. Having, it was unclear, maybe it was they were just kissing in the closet and were found, you know, and this was a boy and a girl, were not married. And having been found kissing in the closet by the girl's father, the father report, reported them. Even though after a doctor examines her, she's a virgin, intact, there's no, there's been no uh, real crime, and uh, it's a premarital sex. But there's more. But... Well, you know, she was accused of not having uh, lost her virginity, but of having partaken in sodomy. Which is worse. Which is even, yeah. I mean, worse than adultery. It's it's just, it's unnameable, unspeakable. So, Tanaz, if you look at this, well, first mind of you, all... I have to say, that's often, I think, a tactic used by women in in countries where you're supposed to stay a virgin as a way to keep your hymen intact. You know? So, um, first of all, how did you get interested in this subject? Um, I, I was not looking necessarily to go do a film in Afghanistan. What happened was um, the president of HBO Documentaries, Sheila Nevins, had read an article about a girl and a boy, Afghan girl and boy, who had fallen in love and were trying to elope to... Uh, Eloped to get married, go to, to go to Iran, leave Afghanistan, start her life in Iran. You know, Iran is next door, and it's like this better economy, and a lot of Afghans go there to improve their lives and to make money. And it's considered freer, if you can believe it. It's like Iran, not Iraq. No, Iran, Iran, Iran is from. It was very, very interesting. It's considered morally loose by the Afghans. That really cracked me up. But, um, so, you know, it's like considered the kind of liberal neighbor next door, <laughs> the Islamic Republic of Iran, mind you. So they, um, they were eloping and they were on their way. They were caught, brought back and beheaded for having con committed such a, you know, a shameful act of deciding who you want to be with and running away. Because the families had in mind who they were meant to marry, like all families do. But they clearly had fallen in love. So it was like a Romeo and Juliet story, and it was it was kind of, you know, it had it was it was beautiful. It was tragic. It's it's awful. It had a lot of elements that you would want to see a film about. But the problem was that they were in an area that's very dangerous. It was um, a Taliban-controlled area, and after uh, talking with the ladies at HBO. We brainstormed, and I came across this um, clip on YouTube where someone had done interviews inside a woman's prison in Kabul, but it was just quick, like, interviews, I think it was for Al Jazeera, like a five-minute piece, and there, there they were, these women who were in prison for kind of similar behaviors, having, you know, had premarital sex, or basically you could still capture the same uh, issues that were in this more Romeo and Juliet tale. Um, and, I, and I thought, well, here's a safe, safe way to do it. Re not safe, but relatively safe. It's Kabul. Kabul is still controlled by, by Karzai. The Americans are there. You can, be, you can feel pretty safe there. More so so, so that's why getting I mean. access then, um, I noticed that in the woman's prison, we see primarily female guards. That, I guess, is by... That you're only allowed to have female guards in a female prison. The male guards protect the prison, they're outside. Because you can't have men and women who are not related 
in the same room in the together. Same room, no. And that's one of the problems with all of these moral crimes that women get into the, a room with a man where they're not allowed without the family supervision, where they're not supposed to be together ever. Well, I mean, it's not just in the, it's not like, oh, they were in a room with a guy. Something happened, you know? Like, women will go to the market and they, you can't, they, they, it's not like they know every person standing there at the market, so you can't control to that degree. But what's happened with these women is they have interacted with a man that is not um, their brother, their father, or their husband. And it's also not the man that their family has selected for them to well, marry. It, right. But you're not allowed to interact with that man either until you're married. But didn't they say there was a six-month uh, testing... Courtship. But Court no touching. I mean, courtship... Oh, I see. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> courtship is... You know, you come and you go, the families get to know each other, you drink tea. It's not know. dating, it's you're not, not petting. You're really, really liberal. I saw this one couple on a date at a, we were at a fast food joint, like a Kentucky Fried Chicken place in Kabul, and there was a couple, and I talked to them, and they were like, yes, we're kind of on a date, and the girl was just like mortified that we were even asking, because clearly she was being so liberal by going on this date in the middle of the day with a guy who she's not married to and is sitting across from having a, you know, fried chicken. So that was already, like, huge, and she didn't want any attention. So that's the kind of society you're dealing with. You you don't... The, like, courtship, even, should happen with the, all the family around. You know, maybe they come to your house a little bit, you go to their house, but it's like a group activity. <laughs> no, the... The point of this, I wondered, because, I mean, for the West, this whole idea of the way women are second-class citizens in the Middle East. Maureen Dow just did a huge uh, New York Times column about the Saudi Arabian woman trying to get permission to drive. They're not allowed to drive cars. Men, Saudi Arabia is hardcore. Yeah. yeah. And so, in the West, we seem to be totally horrified by these restrictions uh, against women being able to have basic, what we consider freedoms. Right. Freedoms of choice, how to dress, yeah. who to who to live with, or whatever. Yeah. And yet, these are th theological governments. So, from their point, you keep saying in this documentary, when you're talking to the women in the prison, and to the prison matrons that are with them, do you consider this a crime? And they can't really say... The women who I are... I keep asking that. <laughs> you, and the women who are under um, siege, uh, under, you know, court, uh, des they're going to be tried, or they have been tried, they will answer kind of honestly. The prison matrons have to sort of finesse how they say yes or no. They You may get the feeling that they don't think it really is a crime, but they can't sit there and say... I don't even think they're finessing it. You don't? No, they don't. They're not necessarily concerned about how they're perceived or whatever. This is not, you know, to them, we're just some film crew from God knows where, planet Mars, and, like, who's ever going to see this? You know, So they're comfortable in, okay. that, in that sense. They're not um, worried that some authority would see them saying... I doubt it. Okay. You know, I think they really just tell you what they think officially they should tell you. Okay. And that is often what they they believe or not, but it, they they it's 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 enough that it's it's official, you know, and that's what that's what they're telling you. So when you wanted to go into the prison and do these interviews with the women, and then what's very interesting too is you'll go to the men that are involved in these cases that are also imprisoned, and we sometimes get very different stories, <laughs> yeah. which is which is kind of like. She said, he it's said. It's like times. any relationship, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> yeah. That was very cute. But how, was it easy to get permission? Did they? God, no. Okay. Oh, my God. I think the real, uh, the actual real creative part of this sort of filmmaking is just the negotiating access. It's really, it's a, it's a, it's a, 